So um, again, I'm Jeff Ferris, President and CEO of um, Cloud Radial. Uh, Matt Fox is joining us today. Um, he's the product manager with Top Left. Um, okay. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to spend a lot of time on Top Left and integration. But I also know we have a lot of people on board today that uh, are not familiar with Cloud Radial. So I want to go through just a couple of minutes about that. Uh, before we get into the top left, uh, for those of you already familiar with top or cloud radio and using it, uh, bear with me for a few minutes and we'll get through this quickly. But again, for those that aren't familiar, uh, hopefully this will be enjoyable. So, um, so as we get into um, now, there we go. There we go. I've mastered the art of changing slides. So, first test is is successful here. So Cloud Radial, uh, for those of, uh, those of you who are not familiar with Cloud Radial, uh, Cloud Radial is what we term a, a CSA, a client services automation platform. And our job is to work tightly with your PSA, like ConnectWise, Autotask, uh, BMS, Synchro, uh, Halo, to basically bring a variety of different pieces together for the benefit of your clients and for the benefits of your account management service team and others inside your organization. So we basically bring all of the client touch points together in a single pane of glass for all of your clients. Uh, we pull together, again, the things that you're probably familiar with, either because they're built into your PSA, such as ticketing portal or service catalog. But we extend that concept much deeper and richer to basically bring in uh, a variety of, of other sources of data. If you think about it as an MSP, you're sitting on megabytes, maybe terabytes, for some of you, maybe petabytes of information, and very little of that makes its way to your clients. And so it's usually a print and present methodology to try to get information to them or to get them engaged and collaborative with the things that you're doing. Um, and so with Cloud Radio, we're going to bring all those touch points in a single pane of glass. So transparency, uh, we can use things as transparency automation uh, to drive the discussion engagement forward. Uh, real quickly, uh, just to uh, go through a little bit about uh, on the Cloud Radio side, uh, we're going to uh, basically you're, you're seeing what your clients would see. Uh, inside of Cloud Radio. So you're going to be able to, uh, your clients are going to be able to interact with you in a variety of different ways, whether that's onboarding uh, new users, uh, being able to do service requests, uh, customize forms, again, to get information into your PSA, uh, also being able to get information out of your PSA, such as support tickets. Again, we're going to take the concepts that you're familiar with inside your typical ticketing portals and take those and in, in, in really, um, really new directions, more powerful, more ways to automate uh, and link to your other services. But again, the, the ticketing concept is one that is just one part of the equation and one part of the engagement that you have with clients. So we're going to bring in training. Uh, we You can create your own courses. You can pull in courses from bigger brains now from clip training and others uh, to provide uh, kind of, again, a, a single pane of glass for users so they're not bouncing between various different portals. Uh, for the people that pay the bills, for the people that um, that you need to do basically uh, reporting for, we're going to pull that reporting into the portal, so you don't you don't have to do QBRs the way you've done them before. Uh, we'll have other webinars on on this topic, but the main thing is that again, you're not focused on delivering a printed report to them. You're basically letting them see in real time what's going on with their with their assets, with the things you do for them protection wise. So you're getting information from users in a structured way. You're providing information to, to your clients in a structured way. And when everybody's on the same page, this really, really improves engagement and collaboration. Um, and then we'll get to a point where basically you're working with your clients in a planner fashion. Uh, so that again, as you work with your clients, as you, as you engage with them, as you make transparency a part of it, the goal with Cloud Radial is to make all of that e exchange of information uh, easy, automated, so that, again, you can spend your time as an MSP focusing on the things that you would like to do that move the needle for both of you and your clients, which is uh, things that help make them money, save them money, and reduce risk in a way that they can understand. And so as a part of all of this, 
one of the, the key things that's been on our list for a while has been related to the presentation of projects and doing and, and project management as we found is a um, is a wide ranging subject and Autotask and uh, ConnectWise in particular have you know basically checked the box for project management as have uh, Kaseya and some others but none of them have really implemented the tools to help you take that project data and move that out into other areas. And that's why we found a tremendous number of, of partners who aren't using the built-in PSA tools uh, just because they fall so woefully short. And so uh, we find a lot of people using Monday and other, other third-party project tools. Of course, when you do that, you lose the ability to do the time tracking and some of the, the, the detail things that you'd like to get or like to keep inside the PSA. So as we look to address this, one of the, again, being a client services automation platform has, has been, uh, I think, transformative for a lot of our partners. It's been uh, very transformative. Uh, I think it's potentially transformative for the industry, but it also is a very broad feature set. Um, and I have yet to have a conversation with a partner that doesn't end up being a request for new features. And if you look at our feature board, I think we've got well over a thousand different suggestions uh, and we routinely check the boxes and get those done. And we're also working on things that aren't even on that feature list that we think would be transformative as well. But the list of things that need to be done in Cloud Radial uh, is large and is growing. And so uh, we've always been focused on integrations and we've always focused on teaming up with pulling data from people that understand that data better than we do. Uh, we've done it with training, with bigger brains and clip training, people that really can spend the time and energy understanding and, and evolving uh, in the training course world, how to, how to get information to users, make it engaging and useful. Uh, we've done it with um, other tools like Augment, uh, Breach Secure Now and others where we're basically using their expertise to, um, again, drive specific behaviors or to monitor specific behaviors and users bring that data into cloud radio so it can be actionable. And so when it came time to do projects, uh, one of the things that we were intrigued by uh, was top left and what they've done inside uh, with their product to really address uh, the shortcomings of the PSA approaches to um, to project management and to make those tools that are already internal, which you already have, um, maybe more robust and useful uh, from a, a management standpoint. And now with the integration, maybe more transparent to the users. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and let him talk a little bit more about, or actually a lot more, uh, about Top Left. So welcome, Matt. Hi, Jeff. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we were excited to work with Cloud Radial to um, be able to help project managers uh, improve their client communications because uh, it's actually we had been kind of tackling the same problem ourselves and then uh, it was just great timing to be able to work with uh, Jeff and Cloud Radial to uh, help Cloud Radial customers specifically with that problem too. So um, you know some of the problems that we well actually let me introduce myself a little more. Yeah, I'm I'm Matt and I go by product manager here at Top Left. That means that I concern myself with uh, making sure that what we were offering to MSPs is really you know solving a real problem and doing it well. And um, yeah, so one of the things that we tackled <clears throat> um, recently was uh, specifically the client communications part of project management because we've actually uh, been helping MSPs. Uh, ConnectWise and Autotask specifically, uh, those MSPs for a number of years already with um, project management from the from the project project manager's own perspective, really. And I will show some of the things that we help with that. But um, one of the things that we now help with is the communications aspect. So uh, you know we had heard from MSPs that the uh, the project managers were spending a lot of time answering questions from their clients. You know, hey. Uh, I've got this project with you, and I'm wondering about these couple tickets. You know, are they done already? Uh, if not, when are they going to be done? Or oh, they're in progress. Um, so when will they be done? Oh, oh, they're waiting on me. Okay, that's something that can happen too. You know, you're uh, doing these projects with customers and certain things they need to do. 
And so that's that's a critical part of the project management is making sure they understand that this part of their, uh, you know, these are things that are now ready for them to do. Find out when they finish that so that you can unblock your own workers and uh, keep those projects moving forward. That can take a lot of time. And it's the sort of thing that's really easy to overlook uh, as well, especially when you just have, you know, a, th a thousand things happening. And uh, and also the visibility that the PSAs have offered in, into that sort of thing is, is really, really weak. Um, so, um, and then uh, other problems that we've heard from project managers are just that, uh, uh, well, you know, Jeff, exactly like you said, the project features in there are very, very basic, um, which is why some use uh, other tools like Monday or, or whatever with the uh, all the disadvantages of losing the link in the data there. Uh, but the, some, uh, I mean, obviously many have decided, okay, it's more important to use the poor tools uh, because of the, the power of just having all the data in one place, all in the in ConnectWise or Autotask, but then then you have big problems with just you know the, the, the poor tools and all you know if you're looking at your project portfolio, all you have is just a list of projects. It's very difficult to uh, prioritize in there or to notice certain problems to identify the problem projects, and you get sort of the same thing if you're looking at it at the, the ticket level too. You just got a work breakdown structure pretty much. And uh, you know, re you're really responsible for looking at that very closely to find okay, which tickets are in which status, which of my people are assigned to those, which um, uh, which tickets are overdue or which tickets have been stalled and maybe forgotten about and things like that. So it's, it's really up to you as a project manager to uh, to look in there very carefully. Um, and and so uh, we, we are actually out of an MSP uh, in the Vancouver, Canada area with all those problems. And so that's why we built top left originally to, to solve some of those problems. So um, let me show you how we have solved those um, specifically in cloud radial. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, the new screen that cloud radial has added. Uh, this, uh, this is available to your clients and uh, their account. If they see the account menu, then they can see projects here now. So that's the new bit that is available in Cloud Radial. And when they click that, they will see a list of their projects from the from the PSA. And uh, they are going to wonder um, about a specific project. They just click on the name. And uh, all that happens is we bring up a view that has a top left embedded in it. So this is a, a top left Kanban board. It's actually really straightforward. Uh, for those of you who have ever seen, uh, you know, Trello or you know, Monday, Asana, that sort of Jira is another one, uh, or Microsoft Planner. If you've used any one of those, then uh, then you'll recognize the the Kanban format. The the columns here, like, and um, th this is just showing the same data that's in your PSA, right? You, if you're using the project management module in your PSA, you already have this data here: the projects and the phases and the uh, and the tickets too. So um, we're just showing it in a different way. The, the columns in a Kanban board represent the key stages of the work. Uh, you know, so if you consider your tif tif ticket life cycle, you know, it starts out in new, um, you'll, you know, then it at some point is ready for an engineer to start. An uh, engineer will take, take it on, it's in progress. Eventually it makes its way over to the right and it's completed with some, uh, some other stages in the middle. It's, it's all very flexible, configured however you need it. Um, all the data, uh, yeah, it is synced two ways. So if a change happens in your PSA, then that's reflected here too. Um, in uh, certain modes of the app, you can make changes to the data here, and then that gets sent straight back to your PSA. The the columns are uh, associated with the ticket statuses that you already have. So um, you can actually, in, in certain modes, drag a ticket from one column to the next, and that will actually change that ticket status back in your PSA, ConnectWise or Autotask. Um, it's just, and it's just a lot easier to see, uh, or a lot easier to understand this data, just in the way that it's presented in, you know, this card format, rather than being a big table or a report that you need to look at really carefully. Uh, it does things like highlight certain problems for you, where, uh, for example, like this uh, one with the red tag here is is highlighting it because that ticket has been in, you know, it's been in that column for a week. Uh, we, you know, we don't like to see tickets that just sit around in the in progress column for too long, so it's taking that in. Uh, in red for us, so it, it helped, and that's that's not even that, that's a, just an example of one of the problems that it helps you identify. There's a variety of other things that it can help you find too. And uh, in this example, we're showing the ticket by uh, uh, we're showing this project uh, by the phases. 
So the work that you've done to put the tickets into the phases is still used within this view. So uh, from the client's perspective, uh, when they're in here in Cloud Radial, wondering about you know uh, the various other things that you're you as an MSP are providing to them. Now when they're wondering about their projects, they can find that all here too, and uh, very easily answer questions for themselves like you know, hey, what what work has been completed now? What work is in progress? Um, or is there any work that's maybe uh, maybe is getting delayed? They can see that. Uh, or although there are ways that you can limit how that's displayed so that uh, that uh, you have control over the communications about that product, uh, that project. And you can also uh, present the work to, that's waiting on them. Like for example, in a waiting column here, you could, you know tell your client at the beginning, hey, anything that's in that waiting column, that's uh, that's going to indicate something that we're waiting on you for. So keep an eye on that. And that can really streamline that communication. And that is really one of the better ways to, uh, best ways to keep projects moving forward is just to streamline that communication so that, you know, as soon as there's a problem, you're dealing with it rather than waiting, you know, waiting a week before you even identify that it's a problem. And then, then you got to go and even start fixing it. So identifying that stuff uh, is some of the, one of the, easiest ways to improve the velocity that you can do those projects at. So uh, this is how your client would experience it. There's, uh, you know, from the perspective of the project manager who does want a better tool to be able to, to manage some of these projects, uh, that's all available, uh, not in the Cloud Radio client portal, but actually in, in the web app that we offer. Uh, this is an example that a project manager might use. This one is showing the whole project portfolio. So uh, you know your projects have a life cycle as well, and so we can present that here on a Kanban board, showing which projects are in progress, which ones are new, or you know waiting to start, and so on. You know, including identifying certain problems about the project level at a whole. You know, the ones that are over budget or or about to start, or maybe they should have started already but they haven't. Things like that. Uh, another example here is a view that is uh, show. Now we're we're showing the project tickets. Again, uh, this one has uh, a way to split these, uh, basically show uh, project by project all of the different tickets that are within those projects. Like this one, it has a section here that's just showing the tickets for one project, an Azure migration project. And you scroll down a bit, you can see another project for a different company, you know, the CRM upgrade project. And it's showing you the actual, some fairly detailed information with the, the actual tickets that are within that and it's powerful because it's all on one page. And that's a view that uh, neither ConnectWise nor Autotask can give a view like that where it's showing the actual tickets of multiple projects at once. You know, if, if you need to do that sort of management, you're uh, doing a lot of clicking or opening a lot of tabs to do that sort of thing. And um, another view that you can see um, is when the tickets are grouped by who's assigned to them. You know, like that's another uh, big problem that a project manager has to uh, has to be able to tackle is like once we know for a project you know to, to accomplish the project we need to do this certain amount of work so I have these tickets now who's actually going to be doing those tickets um, that's always something that a project manager is concerned with and so this view shows us tickets by who they're assigned to for each member of your team and that's also a difficult view to get out of ConnectWise or Autotask so we have a lane that actually shows us the unassigned tickets followed by a lane that shows us the tickets according to who they're assigned to. In a view like this, you can actually drag them between the swim lanes to reassign them. So it makes that job very easy. If you, for example, if you see, um, you know, maybe your senior engineer has twice as many tickets as anybody else. Uh, and so the senior engineer is the bottleneck in your team. Too much ha work has to go through him or her. And uh, and so you want to address that. Maybe you, maybe you notice that there is some work in the ad engineer's queue that uh, can be done by a more junior engineer. And uh, so that's a great way to start speeding up that work. So yeah, for sure, just drag that ticket from one swim lane to the next and that gets reassigned. So it can make things uh, very easy in that way and give you new ways to, to look at that data. And, uh, and there are ways actually that this can actually help the engineers. So it's not just for the clients or the project managers, but we do have a way too that will help the engineers work um, when they can, uh, uh, you know, engineers have a lot of the same problems too, just with the visibility of the work and tickets getting, uh, not being able to prioritize what they think they should be doing or, or what they're, they're being told to do by the project manager or, you know, service dispatcher as well. And, uh, um, or see the problem tickets, you know, certain tickets that they've been assigned to for a while, maybe they have just gotten lost in the in progress column and they've been sitting there for a week. Well, you know, engineers can actually use top left themselves and accelerate their day by 
um, um, you know, even entering time in top left, and then also it, being able to identify some of those problem tickets so that they can actually, you know, uh, handle those themselves and get those back back on their own. So um, yeah, that is uh, that's just a, a very quick summary of some of the ways that top left has helped project managers uh, and engineers, and now we also help clients. So. Matt, I've got, we're getting some good questions in. Um, and one of the things, talk about the interactivity kind of here and in the future for this form right here. And then also you might want to talk about your specific client portal that previously has been freestanding, um, but you're moving that functionality into cloud radio. So if you can, if you can talk about some of that part and then then there's actually some more questions on that but i think it'd just be good to talk about again can they update a ticket can a client update a ticket can a technician update a ticket um, inside these projects yeah yeah that's a good question and that is one of the things that can uh, really accelerate someone's day is just you know in the same view where they are viewing the data they can also make changes to it as well um so some of those things about editing the ticket um it, it Specifically, uh, what we can let the clients do is, you know, this is all optional. You don't have to permit this, but if you want to let them do that, you can. Um, that is um, uh, adding notes to the ticket. So there's a function for that. So you can permit your customers to actually actually um, uh, view the notes that exist on a ticket already and to add their own notes to those tickets as well. Also, there's an option to drag the tickets from one column to the next. So that could be used, for example, to uh, especially for that work that's uh, waiting on the customer. Well, if they uh, if they see that in a column that indicates okay, it's waiting on them, um, you can actually permit them to drag that to the next column to say okay, now it's now it's back in the MSP's court because they have done their part on that work. So at the moment, that functionality uh, is limited to just the uh, the top left portal. Um, you know, on on the, the top left app, uh, it is not yet available in the cloud radial. Um, uh, in the cloud radial interface. And uh, the only reason for that is, um, you know, Jeff, as you know, we launched this fairly recently. And uh, so we just wanted to get people using it as, you know, the, the minimum thing that would work and then wait for the feedback. And uh, it's good to hear that people are, you know, finding that interesting and wanting that functionality in there. So that'll be something that we will be adding into the cloud radial part of uh, uh, the integration there is the ability to actually um, update that information from the cloud radial app. So would a client be able to update their project ticket in the cloud radial portal? Uh, your... Yeah, that's what's missing today, um, but that's what we'll be adding. Okay. I'm answering here, so. Uh, and from a, uh, it does work with Autotask and with ConnectWise both, correct? That's correct. Are there plans to bring other PSs on board in the near term, or is that is that to be decided down the road? Yeah, it's still kind of to be decided. We um, we always take that feedback and um, yeah, get in touch. Actually, just e if you'd like to uh, s tell us what PSA you're using and you'd like to see this functionality, we we definitely want to hear from that. Actually, just uh, Put that in the chat, or you can email me, Matt at topleft.team. You know, we'd love to hear which PSAs you're using. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, that that is for us a, a medium-term decision to see what to pursue there. Okay, and then with Autotask, um, with Autotask projects, it, it, do you guys support the task uh, associated with those projects? Um, I, trying to, because I'm not as familiar with the Autotask projects, but the the Use I guess they use the task metaphor rather than the ticket metaphor. That's right. Yeah, on Autotask side, they specifically call them tasks, not tickets. Uh, and yeah, that's exactly what we do uh, on the Autotask side. We have the, the projects and then the, the tickets for sure. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for Autotask, they're called tasks and we do support that. What I'm showing here is the ConnectWise side, but what you would see here uh, if it was Autotask is exactly this sort of thing. And these would be the tasks. Okay. And then on the phases inside of Cloud Radial, inside your customer portal, can you control what phases are shown to a customer? Do you have, do you have the ability to kind of dial in and dial out either certain ticket statuses or statuses and uh, phases? 
Yeah, it's really configurable. Uh, now, one thing that can't be done is to um, specify certain uh, specific phases that are visible or not visible. So all the phases that you use are going to be visible. Um, if you you know have some tick, entire tickets that you want to be private, that can be accomplished in, I guess, two ways. One could be to have a, a separate project where you keep all the stuff that needs to be private. What would be maybe a little bit easier yet is to have a series of statuses that uh, that are only used for those private tickets. Uh, because how it works is part of the job uh, that you do as you set up a Kanban board is to map ticket statuses to these columns. So if there's any, um, and it's acceptable to not map every single status to a column, right? You're not required to map every status to a column. And that means that uh, you can do that intentionally. Don't map a certain status to any column and then any ticket that's in that status won't appear on the board. Got it. And then this question, is there visibility into hardware changes that are tracked in the project? Um, this right now it's focusing on time. Um, so we, we don't do um, expenses and hardware charges like that right now. Um, yeah, that's the sort of thing that we would collect feedback about. Okay. But at the moment, it's not supported. And then um, Okay, so if we can you show the client portal that runs outside of Cloud Radial? what you provide now to clients or for partners to show their clients, I guess is a better way to phrase it. Uh, okay, sorry, can I show it now? Yeah, can you show a client portal, a sample client portal uh, maybe? Yeah, I think I can. So um, it, uh, it really does look almost exactly the same. But you've got the interactive, you've got interactability or interaction ability with um, with their client portal, with your current client portal outside of Cloud Radio, correct? That's correct. Let's see if I can impersonate someone. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm impersonating here the same user that I was using in Cloud Radial. And uh, so here, uh, here is a view. Uh, let's see what all other boards they could see. Uh, yeah, so here, here's an example of what how it would look in the, the built-in client portal. So this board is not exactly the same as the one that is shown here. Uh, the, the kind of the model here in Cloud Radial is that you um, your your client will look at this list of projects and decide which one they want to see on a Kanban board and then select one. Uh, and that is, uh, that certainly that sort of mode is supported here too. <clears throat> uh, but some additional modes are supported here in the built-in portal where uh, as uh, in this example, this user is seeing um, the uh, two, multiple projects at once. So as I had described, like sometimes that's a really useful view for a project manager, they wanna see the tickets within multiple projects at once. And uh, that can be a useful view for a, a client as well, who just kind of wants a, a quick view uh, to see what's going on in more than one project. So uh, these are all like this project is the downtown office move project. So in, in the view like this, we're seeing all the tickets that are part of that project, but here they're split up by the phase. And in this particular example here, now we're seeing all of the tickets for that project. They're all together in one lane here. And then, um, and then we're able to see the tickets of a second project. And you know, if they had four projects going all at once, then they'd see uh, see that uh, those uh, other two projects as Can well. Can they add a note from here currently? Uh, yeah, if this option is available. Uh, yeah, so here's an example. Uh, let's see if there's an example with a real note. <clears throat> Yeah, so here's one. They could see time entries here, and uh, and then they could add their own note. Got it. So this this is an example of how they would uh, add a note to that, and then that gets uh, that gets sent out to the uh, the people who are assigned as resources on that ticket. So this is the types of things you'd like to bring into Cloud Radial is that ability back into what they're seeing, correct? Yeah, exactly. All right.
and then um, just FYI, so we're integrating with Top Left, but we don't have any, we don't resell Top Left. Um, so if if any of you are interested in Top Left or licensing, uh, you'll need to reach out to Matt after this uh, webinar to get the pricing details. Um, and um, yeah, absolutely. What I suggest is um, just go to the website topleft.team is the address and uh, click the big get a demo button there at the top. That we that way we can just you know have 15 minutes to to talk together and uh, answer any questions and to describe how the the free trial period and how we help you get started there and uh, show you any other things that you might want to see before you get started. And then one of the things is, is again, this is a, a, as Matt mentioned, this is version one of the integration. Um, there's a couple of questions related to Cloud Radio's ability to show a project list. Um, and so that's, again, we're sort of doing that already today. Um, and then those projects are the ones that can be dialed into from top left. Um, again, as we get Again, more feature requests, more feedback. We should be able to dial in specifically which projects are shown for clients, so that before they even click on a project, um, you know, you know that you've got it dialed in for that particular user to be able to see. Uh, the projects window is also based on is also configurable under Cloud Radio security roles capability, so you can turn off projects for particular users or enable them for particular users. Um, so again, when you impersonate, you'll see them, but you may not always see them. Uh, your users may not be able to see them based if you've turned that off or not. Um, and so again, I think that addresses a permission issue or question. Uh, does top left work with standard service tickets? Yeah, it does. Um, it, uh, at the moment, it doesn't work uh, for that in cloud radial, but top left, it uh, is, uh, yeah, it certainly does. Um, that's another big problem that uh, many MSPs have is get, you know, their service tickets get lost or their, their dispatcher doesn't know what's going on. Just, you know, from the the um, reports that ConnectWise or Autotask gives you or uh, another one we hear is our dispatcher, you know, they, they work out of the dispatch portal. So they're always putting tickets into uh, certain engineers calendars, but that's, a, uh, you know, a lot of work. Um, I once heard a, a dispatcher who took uh, two it took two hours a day for her to just manage time for two engineers, uh, right? So that was a that was a big investment. So they're wondering, you know, is there an easier way to do some of this sort of stuff, uh, to kind of step back from the the nasty cycle of you know you put a ticket into a calendar, but inevitably something doesn't quite go according to plan. You know, the ticket doesn't get worked on during that time, or it took a lot longer than the time that was allocated, and it just messes up the rest of the calendar, and everything needs to be rescheduled. Right, that's kind of a nasty loop that some MSPs find themselves in, and they wonder if there's a better way to do that. And uh, we can certainly help with that sort of thing too. So yeah, uh, we do service tickets for sure, and uh, and even in the ConnectWise side, uh, they can actually be shown together with the project tickets. Because I know a lot of MSPs don't have uh, you know dedicated service teams or dedicated project teams. They just have hey, they have their team of technicians, and they work on both. And so for that, it's really valuable to be able to see both service and project in one screen. And uh, at least on the ConnectWise side, you can. That is something we are going to be adding to the Autotask side. Now you'd also mentioned that um, there was some scheduling going back and forth. Can can you update schedule entries from within top left, or is that done through the PSA? Um, yeah, uh, so certainly that's a place where we plan to make some improvements. Uh, you can't actually edit one now, but there is a way both for ConnectWise and Autotask to create new schedule entries. So you can uh, you can assign somebody and put it into their calendar at, uh, in ConnectWise and uh, in Autotask that's called service calls, and uh, yeah you can create a new service call in from top left, uh, both for uh, service tickets and uh, project tasks as well. And then and is there a way for clients that maybe are going to be away from their portal or they don't want to show this to clients? Is there a way to print? a report and provide to clients of their project statuses using that Kanban layout? Um, I suppose uh, we have heard of people, you know, printing out the Kanban boards. Uh, it's it's not a dedicated thing that's, that we've gone out of our way to, to implement, but, uh, you know, it appears in the browser. So I think some people have 
printed out what the browser shows and and brought that brought that to their clients. Okay, and then um, one of the things that's come up too, and I, maybe not in these questions, but um, and I, again, there's there's plenty of questions here. I'm not sure we're going to get to all of them in the course of this webinar, but one of the things that's interesting now that we have a project linkage inside of Cloud Radial is being able to link potentially planner items back to projects. And so again, this is on a roadmap as well. So that, um, again, if you think about the flow of information, um, you know, inside that planner view uh, of Cloud Radial, being able to link back to projects and be able to, from that project, being able to open up, you know, this, this Kanban board to see the summary of it, right? So again, planner items that are in progress should be able to tie back to things like this. Um, and so again, as we, again, there's just never, an, uh, I've never ever talked to a partner without a feature request. And, um, you know, as we get in here, you know, this list is gonna grow. And I think this is one of the things that we struggled with as, as an organization. Again, when we get this, you know, we, we get multiple project, we get multiple feature requests a day is getting this stuff done. and. Um, again, I, I like what Top Left is doing and the fact they're focusing on it. We just need to glue things better on our end, kind of what we started here, but I know we can still do a better job of gluing things here on our end back to that, that tool and reporting. Matt, can you talk about pricing a little bit and how you license and kind of what it would talk, what it would cost for a partner to um, trial it, what it costs to start off with like one or two clients in your in, in Top Left, kind of ballpark what those price points look like yeah i sure can do that and for anybody who's uh, wondering for the details pricing is on the website here you can click uh click your psa and get the pricing uh it's split up into three tiers or i suppose four actually uh since we're talking about client portal so uh, we have a basic standard and a premium tier <clears throat> and uh at different price points for different uses. And then I guess the you could say the fourth tier is the client portal license. So uh, let me give kind of the two common cases that we see. So one case would be for the uh, uh, for someone who just wants to, as a single project manager and they're frustrated with what's available in their PSA, they just say, I, I need a better tool for myself. Okay, so they are gonna get a premium license. Uh, that's kind of the main case for that. Uh, that starts at, um, well, yeah, it's $75 a month for a premium license. And uh, that will let them do everything that I showed you today um, in terms of the tools for the project manager. You know, they can have the, the boards that show the overviews. They can uh, set up the columns however they want, dragging, dropping for themselves, you know, entering notes and, and changing the data for themselves. <clears throat> That's what you would get with the one premium license for a project manager. And then you would get a certain number of client portal licenses. Those are $30 a month. Uh, and a client portal license allows you to invite, each license gets you one company. So one of your clients can come in and see the client portal, whether that's uh, in the built-in client portal or the cloud radial part of it. Um, one license is for one company. Now within any company, you can invite any number of people. There's no limit. So whether that's a company where you're, you know, you're mostly working with one person who's concerned about the project, or you're working with a whole team, you know, there's you know six or seven people who are who want to see updates on these projects. Doesn't matter, you can invite everybody with one license uh, for one company there. Uh, so that would be the example for for an MSP where their your main concern right now is just I'm a project manager. And I need better tools. Um, the other main case is for the whole uh, where an MSP says, you know what, um, in addition to project management, I really want my engineers in here using it because my engineers also suffer from problems with you know, bad visibility and kind of wondering what's going on and getting missing things and not entering time and so on. So uh, that's the other common case. In that case, uh, most likely you would want to get a standard license for all uh, for for the whole team that's going to use it. Um, and actually, uh, in that case, there's a lot. Uh, uh, most likely, you're actually your project manager could also use a standard license in that case. I won't go into all the details why, um, but but that would be a common case that, in fact, everybody on your team could just have a standard license in that case too. Uh, you might not need to even need any premium licenses. And then all of your engineers can get in there. They can get the benefits of the visibility into the work. Project manager has all the tools 
that they need to to manage that. And uh, it, it could be that you you also might have some people who aren't going to work from top left regularly. Yeah, maybe they check it once a day, maybe even once a week, just to kind of help them gauge what's going on, see if there's any problems that they need to know about. But they're not going to be you know like entering time in top left. Uh, those are people who could get the basic license, and that, that that's very inexpensive, just ten dollars a month for one of those licenses. Uh, now. For that team, where the whole team is working from top left, uh, again, they would also get the client portal licenses for whatever number of companies that they um, that they think need to be be able to to have that self serve access within the portals there. Which by no means like that does not need to be all of your companies at all. Uh, it's really really flexible actually. So um, it, you do, you don't actually license the uh, like a license is not tied to a particular company. What I mean is you can say you know normally we run about you know, in our MSP, we, we run six big projects at once. Okay, so I'm going to get six licenses for six companies. And when you finish one big project with one company, you you uh, unlicense that company, and then you're going to start another project for another company, and then you grant that license to the new company. So um, it's very flexible in that regard. Got it. So basically, one one premium license again for every every piece of functionality. And then one client portal license is, is and that's what, $100, $105 a month. Is that, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, $105 a month. Okay. So for one client to get started, is that, um, and then how long is your trial period for getting started? Yeah, uh, we offer a free trial for, uh, for two weeks. That's usually lots of time to get started and set up some good boards and, uh, and understand the, how it's going to help you at your MSP. At the beginning of that trial, we actually have a, uh, we call it the concierge onboarding call. We wanna uh, help you through setting up those boards. So, you know, we've got our best practices and we don't want you to have to worry about setting up another tool, right? Everybody has too many tools. So instead of, you know, you having to figure it out all on your own, you just join us for a call. We'll get everything set up for you. We'll teach you how to do it so that you can go on your way and set up other boards. And uh, now, and then there is a, um, a 299 setup fee for that. We kind of we say it's the call, uh, the fee for that call, uh, but we don't actually charge it until after the trial when you go forward with a, a paid subscription. So for those who maybe do the trial and then decide it's not for them, it actually uh, there's not going to be any charge for that. Got it. And then um, so is there um, and the customization capability, again, we you talked about being able to control which statuses appear for which phases. And then the other question is, is what other customization do you have um, where you can dial in or, or, or exclude certain things from, from that project listing? Or is it really just controlling the tickets by status? No, there's quite a bit of customization. So uh, like as an example, um, all of the fields or, or at least almost all the fields that are shown on the card here, uh, that, that can be turned on or off. And there's actually even more that is possible to show here um, that are, that's turned off right now in this example. So you can turn these all off so you don't show that sort of thing. Um, and also in the client portal mode, you can turn off some of these options like specifically around the, uh, the time, you know, like this warning here, um, it, you know, it's, it's in red because this project is over budget, uh, or rather this phase part of it is over budget. And uh, so that, and there are options to be able to disable that sort of thing too. Um, and so that's actually how people are setting this up is um, they uh, set up a bunch of Kanban boards with you know a, a variety of ways to look at the data uh, for their team. And then they'll set up specific Kanban boards, which they make available to the client portal. And they set that up in a custom way for just what they want their clients to be able to see. Got it. And then is there a way like the top left logo in the in the top left of the page there? Can they customize that with their own logo? They sure can. Yeah. There's a few okay. ways to customize it. There's a, um, you know, that image, the color, the um, for the built in portal, there's an image on the login page. You can change that. So there are a variety of ways to change that. Is there a way to turn off the time entries and just kind of show the tickets and the and the statuses? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that would be an example like this one here. Um, I mean, the, 
the options are turned on here. I can see that because they're showing on this ticket. So um, <clears throat> this ticket is not showing those because it doesn't have any of that data, but uh, you absolutely can set it up so that they will uh, be just a simple display like this, even if there are time entries on it. Okay, so you can dumb this down to just the absolutely. very basic information, right? Yeah, for sure. And then in your premium license as a user, you've got complete views of, I mean, as an, as an MSP, you can see everything, correct? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that's not even the sort of thing that depends on the, you know, the premium standard or basic tier. Uh, you can even turn on those options, even for somebody who's on a basic tier, because those those are the options that apply to your staff who, you know, of course, you're going to show more information to the staff. Are, are there other views besides the Kanban view that relate to um, high level summary chart, uh, percent complete different phases, calendar views, any of that stuff? I think you mentioned something that was coming up. I don't know if you want to talk about it now, but. Sure. Yeah. Um, now there's things like percent complete. That's pretty, that's a field and you can, uh, you can show that on the Kanban boards if you want. Um, other more, uh, you know, more significant views, other ways to look at this data, specifically uh, Gantt charts and calendars. Uh, those are things that we don't do today, but we, uh, we definitely want to, like we receive requests for those fairly regularly. And uh, so those are coming up on our roadmap. We want to add those, um, like you know, even even within months. Um, so uh, yeah, you can keep keep an eye out for those sorts of things. And uh, definite, um, I think at least some of those things we would add to the client portal, the the portal views for the clients too. Okay, and um, I think we've talked. There's, I mean, there's quite a few. There's a lot of interest in price. One of the things that, um, again, just to kind of highlight the time productivity, we'd worked with an MSP years ago um, and they had a person that was basically dedicated to, you know, once a week updating all the clients on all the statuses. Um, and, you know, it's just a, it's a laborious process, um, basically sometimes telling them the same information they just told them the week before, sometimes not, not all that interesting, but, yeah. um, but it was important to keep the clients up to date with all of their project information. And, and what really strikes me here is that what you guys are doing is you've just eliminated that position slash effort each week um, yeah. because a client can easily click something and see the status of all the tickets that are ongoing. And I, I just, Again, I think about, uh, again, there, there'll always be people that look at the $30 per client is, is too much or too high or too low. There's always, there's always an opinion on a price. But um, I just think back to that one person we had that was dedicated to this. Um, and there was a lot more than $30 going into that position uh, to update that client every week. So um, again, just a huge time savings, even though... Um, you know, and, and a huge dollar savings too overall. Um, yeah, and it's not just even about the time that you might think, okay, like how much time is my project manager or project coordinator uh, spending to actually do that communication? Like that's, that's one part of it, but it's not the only thing. Um, it's also about what's the benefit to your customers, like your client's experience, right? I mean, and I think you, uh, of all people, can speak to that um very well. I mean, your whole product is built on, hey, let's let's give MSPs a way to have a really tremendous client experience by letting them get all this self-serve information. It's always up to date. They can look at it when they want. And um, and now that's come to projects too. So it's like, by no means is it just like, how much time is your project person saving to send this out? No, it's it's about like, how do we, um, how do we differentiate ourselves from the MSP cross town? by giving them this sort of service? Well, one of the things that we're seeing too, and uh, again, we've, we've, we've had the blessing of working with a lot of MSPs over the last you know, four, five years now, actually. And one of the things that's really clear is that the, the more information, the more transparency you provide to your clients, and the more trust that you build with them as well, right? When you're not scared of showing them constantly what's going on with their projects, with their tickets, with their assets, you know, everything that Cloud Radio is bringing together, that transparency really brings trust. And that trust, as we found, starts opening up other 
buckets of budget within the clients, right? I mean, there's there's only so much money that clients have to manage their technology. Um, and, you know, oftentimes they view that as a cost, right? They view that like insurance. They view that as, as a necessity, but not something they started their business for. When you start dialing in the trust and you start moving into managing their people and, and basically making sure their people are informed and engaged and, and a part of it, you start getting into the, what we call the value budget, which is, you know, or an ROI budget, where I, all of a sudden I can see what I'm spending uh, with my MSP is starting to pay back because my people uh, are more productive, more engaged, more informed. Um, and projects are a big part of that, right? Again, when is when is this new project going to be available? Helping helping a business manage their people and get their work done uh, has ROI for a business. And, and again, all these types of things open up that ROI budget. Um, and if you do those two things well, you start opening up um, the VCIO budget, right? Where you're really starting yeah. to, to work strategically with the client because now this trust is not an issue, transparency is not an issue, and they've gotten so used to working with you collaboratively on the daily type things that they just naturally drift into working with you strategically on the long range things. And we've seen this as a huge differentiator between small MSPs and large MSPs is, is how much of those budget buckets um, MSPs are able to tap into. So I think the things that are, again, these are all small steps, but you add, you know, project uh, management along with ticketing, along with uh, office, along with assets, along with security, compliance, all these things come together in that single pane of glass for a client's uh, it's just an ex it's a very powerful way to uh, transform that relationship from, you know, being the guy that fixes things uh, or, you know, to, to be in the firm that uh, basically helps guide them on how to how to grow their business. And uh, again, it, every detail, everything that you can do through automation, through technology, it's just it's just it's just huge. Um, so. As we, we're getting running out of time, I, I think we've gotten through most of the questions, uh, most of the pricing stuff we've dealt with. Um, again, if you're interested in top left, uh, go to the, the top left uh, dot team website, right? Um, That's right. And, uh, you know, get be sure to get a demo. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a demo. Uh, if you're interested in cloud radial, uh, be sure and go to the cloudradial.com website uh, and sign up for a demo there. Again, nothing wrong with the demo. Um, I've, I used to resist doing demos uh, personally for anything I signed up for. And I realized I just wasted so much time because so many things I'm searching for on the web, I could just ask, right? And so, uh, you know, if you have interest in cloud radial or top left, just just waste our time and ask for uh, a demo, even if you have no interest in buying, right? So, uh, because again, those conversations help us understand better about where to take the product. Um, and I think you'll find at the end of the day that uh, it's just a great, uh, a great time savings for you to get into the product and figure out if there's a fit or not. Uh, and let's see, is there, uh, one last question, because now that you've talked about it now, so what's the ETA for a client being able to update a ticket from within Cloud Radial? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that I can safely give a, a, a good date for that, but... Um, I mean, I think they're, they'll be happy with next Wednesday. Uh <laughs> You know, I mean, you don't have to give like a specific date. A day of the week is good, like next Wednesday, next Friday. But yeah, I mean, but it's on your roadmap, correct? For sure it is. Yeah, we we understand that's a valuable part. I mean, we do not, uh, like we understand um, it's part of the value of client um, cloud radial is that you don't have to go and explain a new portal to your clients. Like, uh, you know, we don't want you to have to do that unless you really want to. So uh, we, we totally get the, uh, the value that there is in, hey, customers already in client portal, uh, in, in cloud radial, and um, definitely value and be able to update that sort of thing. So let's, let's make it available there. Okay. Well, I really appreciate uh, joining us today, Matt. I appreciate uh, 
everybody sticking in here today to uh, listen to uh, this. The recording will be made available, so we'll certainly be able to uh, show everybody uh, if you want to watch it later, you're certainly be able to do or share with others. Uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, again, appreciate your attendance today. Uh, uh, wish you all the best, and uh, may we still have a nice, mild, pleasant winter. Uh, cheers to all, and uh, we'll be talking soon, I'm sure. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.